before we continue our adventure, let's take a look at the story so far. Our story takes place in the land of Kaland, a country far from the shores of Waterdeep. This was once the home to the Grand Imperium Arcanum, a technologically advanced civilization without equal, that has since been gone from the face of the earth for approximately 2,000 years. However, there are ruins and mysterious relics scattered across the continent that are reminders of this once powerful empire and its destruction. This is the story of six misfits who have stumbled across something much bigger than themselves. Our party is made up of Valena Larian, Corin Longmire, Tippletoe Turin, or Tippy for short, Salen Quindrake, Fib, and of course, Ken Gildenloss Greenwood. Beginning outside the gates of Aleport, the major port city within Kaland, each of our party members had their own reason for wanting to enter the town, which was closed off to the general public. They made their way to the Merchants Guild and were able to receive writs of contract for entrance into and out of the city in exchange for services. The contract which the group was to undertake was to exercise a house that was filled with ghosts a couple of miles west of the city. That being said, the group gathered themselves and went to the ghost house, which actually turned out to not be haunted at all, but to be a smuggling den that was using the cover of ghosts to scare people away. This got our adventurers feet wet and also made them an enemy of one smuggler named San Balat. However, they were able to overcome the trial and clear the house of the smugglers. Returning to town, they were made full-fledged members of the Merchants Guild and made themselves familiar with Aleport proper. They became deputized by the Captain of the Guard, Eleander Firebeard. Investigating, they found some corruption amongst the merchants themselves within Aleport and were able to trace it back to the ghost house among the coast. Also, they made friends with the local librarian slash gravedigger Crag, and actually undertook a mission for him to retrieve some ancient texts from one Renault's tomb. However, on this adventure, an evil spirit planted an idea inside Tippy's head that would continue to grow. The name Desthalar, ringing out over and over. The group was then tasked with finding and eliminating the smuggling ring that had been operating out of the ghost house. Knowing that the smugglers were to return to the ghost house, the group somehow managed to sneak their way aboard a vessel named the Sea Ghost. Not only that, they took ownership of it by relieving the captain of her duty. Aboard the ship, there were smuggled weapons, as well as a couple of lizard people, and some ancient relics from the time of the Imperium Arcanum. One of which was a glove which showed Fib a vision of the past. And this kicked off his obsession with gloves. The group returned the ship to Aleport and were tasked with finding and eliminating the smuggling ring on Crookspur Island. While investigating around the town, they came across a warehouse which led to an underground facility and an apparent gate with some ancient demonic writing. The group sealed this up and then began a journey to return the two lizard folk to their people. Reaching the seat of the lizard folk's power, the group was surprised to learn that one of their members was a doppelganger who was trying to assassinate the lizard queen. Eliminating this threat led to more questions than not, and the lizard queen was able to translate the text which the group found beneath the warehouse, which seemed to indicate that the merchant Zael was in some way related to this portal. Ken had spent a night with Zael and had received a pendant with a Z on it, and this pendant would prove to be much more than meets the eye. The group also learned that the lizard people had been purchasing weapons in an attempt to retake their homeland from a group of encroaching sea elves. With everything in place, the group made their way towards Crookspur Island. But it would not be so simple as just sailing there, for the waters themselves were quite treacherous, and in trying to navigate through the rocks and coral, 
the group's ship suffered some extreme damages. The group was, however, able to make it to Crooksburg, although they needed to continue to be under the guise of smugglers as their ship required many repairs. The repairs were going to cost much more than the group currently had, and so they undertook a mission to try and alleviate Crooksburg Island of the rapidly growing quarrel in an attempt to investigate where this was coming from. Deep beneath the ocean, they found an old Arcanum research facility which was causing sea life to grow wildly out of control. Turning off the machines woke up an ancient abolith which they barely defeated. Underneath the ocean, however, underneath the ocean, however, Ken noticed that no matter what he did, the pendant that was given to him by Zael continued to reappear on his neck each morning. And not only that, he felt some of his memories of the past slipping away. This was not the only point of worry for the group, for as they emerged victorious from the bottom of the sea, they were attacked by one of the previous crew members of the Sea Ghost. Eliminating him, and unfortunately destroying his ship, they were able to return to Aleport victorious, and the coral itself could be seen crumbling from all around. The group made friends with the smugglers that they were sent here to eliminate, and learned that there was an agreement between the smugglers island and Aleport proper, however Aleport had stopped reciprocating on their agreement. In the midst of these investigations, however, all hell broke loose as the two factions on the island decided to go to war immediately. The group took up the fight on the side of the Principe, fighting against the Sea Rats. During one of the fights, their new friend Zaji took a poisoned bolt and fell mortally ill. The group fought their way through the town and eventually reached the Rat's Nest, where they found none other than San Balat, half-burned and ready for revenge. Taking out San Balat and the rest of the leaders of the Sea Rats, the group was victorious, however now they needed to find a cure for their new friend Zaji. To this end, they traveled to the center of Crooksburg, where plants and animals had been mutated in strange ways. Here, they found the cure that they needed, and they were able to return to Zaji just in time to cure him. While on the strange island, Tippy and Valena inhaled some purple dust, which seemed to begin to change their bodies, both of them having flecks of violet within their eyes, and also some strange new arcane abilities. The Crookspur smugglers were once again indebted to the group. But the question remained, what to do about Crookspur and the smugglers, since they were sent here to eliminate the smuggling ring? With some new information on hand, the group decided it was best to head back to Aleport and talk with Eleander about the smugglers and their contract. The return trip, though not nearly as exciting as the trip to Crookspur, still proved to be quite interesting. Each member of the group experiencing something odd during the journey back. Corin visited by the god Pelor and shown a holy quest. Salen continuing to get hints of pine on the breeze. Valena thinking back to some of the information that she's learned recently. Fib reflecting on the images that he had been shown by the jewel. Ken plagued by his fading memories and the reappearing sigil of Zael. Tippy feeling a call from deep within the darkest parts of the ocean, and a repeated word, Desthalar, Desthalar.